Hello and welcome to Teachings in Education. I am your narrator, Frank Avello. Here we're going to look at some of the best science teaching activities for your students. First up, teachers can assign students to create flow charts on, on a number of different scientific processes, such as the path of blood, cellular respiration, photosynthesis, or any other step-by-step -step process. Classroom demonstrations are something you wouldn't want to miss out on as a science teacher. Perform the elephant toothpaste reaction, mentos and coke, synthetic nylon, clock reactions, and many more that'll dazzle the students. Assign your students a topic, say the greenhouse effect, and have them create a PowerPoint and present it to the class and take questions on it. Models are often used as a way to represent what isn't readily visible, such as molecules or microscopic organelles. Assign students the task of creating a DNA model. Clay models of an animal cell are another example. Food science lessons can be applied to multiple grades. Some examples include making butter from scratch. After the butter is made, let the kids enjoy it over some fresh bread. Many science college graduates find careers doing research. Teachers have an obligation to prepare students for the future. Assign research reports at least once a year. Why not have a science fair? Allow the students to present their work to the entire school. They can put it on a trifold board. You'll need to get the principal on board, but why wouldn't they? And classes can come down in the afternoon and view the work. Learning centers are a classroom activity where several different assignments are located at tables in the classroom. Students rotate as a group from table to table. Marzano's research shows that one of the best ways to learn new information is to compare and contrast to other known information. As an activity, have students complete a Venn diagram or any other type of graphic organizer. When I was in school, we were allowed to perform dissections. Today, schools with limited resources use virtual dissection. You can find them online and it's much easier than having to do all the work of setting up and cleaning after the real dissection. Games are always fun if the teacher makes it that way. Try a science bingo or a science jeopardy. You'll need to give a prize if you want maximum engagement, maybe a small bag of chips. Poster boards were always a staple of my classroom teaching. Students can create posters on the world of biomes. They can do the tundra, the desert, deciduous forest. And then they present that information to the classroom. I've always been a big advocate for field trips. It provides an opportunity for students to make a connection between the content and real life. It also gets the students out of the boring classroom. Classroom debates may seem like an activity meant for social studies classes, but it doesn't have to be. Allow students to debate the effects of global warming. Students make arguments and support their arguments with scientific evidence. Lab experiments are requirements for several secondary science courses. At the end of the day, performing lab experiments is essential function of science. Mr. Zellman has his environmental science students create comic strips on environmental issues such as oil shortage and, get and electric cars. For biology, he has students create a flip book for mitosis and meiosis. Another activity is to do current events in science class. Students can read web articles on a daily news in the scientific community. They can then write about it and share with their opinions. Lastly, provide students with puzzles, brain teasers, and riddles. Crosswords are popular as well. It stimulates their brain, and kids just kind of love completing puzzles. Anyway, right now I want to say thank you for your time. Please check the description for resources related to science teaching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and please like and share this video as well. Benjamin Franklin apparently said, Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. But what do we really know about effective learning hundreds of years later? Many respected economists and educators from the world's leading universities research this topic. They discovered that many things don't matter, such as classroom size, new technology, or fancy uniforms. Their evidence suggests that the secret to thriving students is amazing teachers. Here's what they have learned. First, we have to acknowledge that teaching is a highly complex skill. It involves a deep understanding of the subject matter and the ability to explain complex issues in simple ways. But it also requires an understanding of psychology, pedagogy, as well as a wide range of management skills in order to get the students first quiet and then excited. Rob Coe, 
professor at Durham University reported that many widely used methods don't work. For example, grouping students by ability, giving unearned praise, or the idea that students can discover complex concepts by themselves. Instead, master instructors have high expectations and maximize the lesson time. But most importantly, they combine high-quality instruction with pedagogical content knowledge. They don't teach a subject, they teach their students how to learn it for themselves. In order to get it right, we have to treat and train teachers like brain surgeons. After all, they operate on human brains. Like aspiring doctors, they are best trained in the field where they receive professional feedback when they make mistakes. Effective schools of education, therefore, train teaching like a craft rather than an abstract science. At Spazzato, a graduate school of education known for creating effective teachers, students spend a lot of their time tutoring or assisting professionals. Teachers who are already in the classroom need regular professional feedback on the job. A vast study by Roland Fryer from Harvard found that teachers who receive precise instructions together with specific regular feedback from a lead teacher will improve the most. Other good ideas to improve teachers are to ask the students for feedback or to record lessons on video and let the teachers watch themselves. Doug Lamov, founder of Uncommon Schools and author of Teach Like a Champion, identified many methods that great teachers use. They greet each student at the door so students feel welcomed and acknowledged of their existence. Later, they use a strong voice and don't stop talking until they have everyone's attention. Plus, they teach for mastery learning to ensure students get it 100% right before they proceed. But maybe most importantly, great teachers first get their students excited and then keep their attention through storytelling and engaging activities that spark their imaginations. A paper published by Stanford in 2009 showed that leadership makes a big difference too. At low-performing schools, principals hardly ever show up in the classrooms, but instead spend most of their time on administration, documents or finance. Schools with better students have principals that get out of their office and spend a lot of time in the classrooms, supervising and developing the teachers. Together, they can make a big difference in their students' life. Economist Raj Chetty and his team analyzed the data of 2.5 million US students and 18 million test results. He thinks that instructors who are good at teaching to the test have a big impact. On average, having such a teacher for just one year raises the student's test scores and cumulative lifetime income by 14,500 in 2011 dollars. On early childhood education, he has another hypothesis. Great kindergarten teachers help to develop social skills, discipline and character. Their impact does not improve test scores during the school years, but surprisingly re-emerges years later when their former students apply those skills to advance in their careers and find meaningful and well-paying jobs. Eric Hanushek, professor at Stanford University, computed how much good teachers really matter. He found out that top teachers get students to learn 50% more each year than an average instructor. Poorly trained ones, just half of the average. That means that 10 years at school can either result in 15 years of actual learning or just a mere 5 years. This is a massive difference that mainly hurts children from low-income families who can't afford extra classes or changing to a better school. American novelist Gail Godwin once wrote, Good teaching is one-fourth preparation and three-fourths pure theatre. To see great actors in action, watch Michael Sandel from Harvard teach law, Robert Sapolsky from Stanford teach behavioral biology, Walter Michelle from MIT teach physics, or Mr. Hester managing a classroom of teenagers. Links are in the description below and other great instructors in our channel playlists. Now, please share your favorite teachers in the comments below.